So I'm going to use the uh, Mission Life Straw. And I have to go and find a source of water. And I just wanted to say that, uh, gee, I'm still working on where to put this and I've got some ideas that it will be going on a pride to place thing soon. I'm going to go and find some water. Come along with me. So after walking about 10 feet, uh, we have the pond at the Shire, but I'm not going to use the pond. It would be difficult to access because it's actually dried out because of the drought we've been experiencing this year. And it also is a life source for a lot of creatures in there. And it would be an emergency backup irrigation for the gardens. So I probably aren't going to use this. In grid down, given what we already have, I would probably use the hot tub and put tarp systems up, attaching to various buildings around it and build some stuff and fill that with water and rainwater and probably use that for drinking water after treating it. But none of those options are here yet, so let's carry on and find some water. So one thing we have learned, which you probably already know most people, is that if you don't use trails and they're not in dense woods like this, they actually fill up with grass very, very quickly. So a lot of the trails on the property um, have fallen into disuse because of people being worried about ticks and stuff like that. So what we'll be doing next spring uh, is getting out with machetes and cutting back the trails that exist already to make them walkable during the summer and then in future years creating new trails. But yeah, very beautiful, beautiful day. It's uh, not quite nine o'clock in the morning. It's about 27 centigrade. Humidity is approximately 99%. You really do need to process and get a lot of clean, safe drinking water. Beautiful, beautiful beaver pond. So this is mostly where I'll be getting my water from. So it depends on what area you live in. Um, up here we have a lot of beaver, a lot of deer, a lot of bear and a few moose this far south but not many. So we have to really watch out for protozoa. Things like beaver fever and regardia and stuff like that are going to actually cause devastating months long diarrhea which obviously would affect your survival chances in grid down. So you have to boil at a rolling boil for three to four minutes, which is a lot of fuel and a lot of energy to actually gather the water, gather the firewood. Or you need to have a gravity filter system. So we would use the Berkey, the big Berkey, and we have two of them, and we have filters for 20 years. But I'm going to use the Life Straw today, the Life Straw Mission. This is the 12 litre bag, you can get 5 litre bags, which are probably a bit cheaper. The whole system altogether costs me probably too much money. Um, it will do about 1800 litres of water, so that is a rough calculation. Uh, probably about 180 bags. For camping and kayaking, trips overnight, this is great. Because you grab gather the water, and if it works as advertised, um, gather water once a day, which makes a huge difference over the soil where I found myself gathering five to six times a day and still using aquatabs. All right, let's see how it works. So one of the things you have to look at when you're gathering your water to, to filter it with a gravity system is the source of water. So if you're in a rural environment or an urban environment or a suburban environment, you need to know the area you're actually settled in and you need to go up the water course to look at possible sources of contamination. Because even in a rural area, you don't know what's up river from you. It could be a, a leaking oil tanker, or there could be a huge container of pesticide from a farm that's leaking right by the water source. And you won't know that. And obviously that risk is much higher in urban and suburban environments. The other thing you need to think about is rainfall. So the go-to for me will be rainfall catchment. Uh, after about three to six months after a nuclear war, mostly rainfall catchment will be fine. Without a nuclear war, uh, even with a volcanic activity event that causes SHTF, after a few months the water will be reasonably okay to drink. It's never going to be perfect and you still need to filter it. 
if you can, with a gravity system. Again, the Berkey would be filtering all potable water and probably most of the water we would use for cleaning and uh, washing up. So we had a really heavy rainfall last night. So there's three streams within a five minute walk of where we're living. But I'm not using those streams though, usually I would because they've been filtered, pre-filtered by the soil and the sand around them. The reason I'm not using them specifically is because of the heavy rainfall last night. Any debris, any animal poop, any animal carcasses, any waste products will have actually been pushed into the stream. So that's why I'm going to use the uh, the pond. Now if you use a pond, uh, have a kayak, have a canoe, have a little rubber raft, go out into the middle of the clear area, scoop the water like this with your paddle and then fill it up, right? And don't go in too deep with the bag. Uh, I'm using side of the pool today to get this, so let's see how this works, shall we? Well, that's uh, pretty impressive. Obviously, deeper water is going to work better. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll show you when I get there. The water is heavily contaminated. Heavily contaminated. So, I have my somewhat unclean water, and I have the bag. Now the bag is actually labelled on this and you can see probably it's just over four litres. So I got about a third of what I could have gathered. When you're walking with it, it's pretty comfortable. It does need though, this is a waterproof bag, it does need to be closed because it will slosh out. It's pretty comfortable, not bad. Now the beauty of this system is in an urban or suburban environment, I would actually have this inside a backpack. I don't necessarily want to have to drop it and lose this. The other thing with this system is that if you lose this bag, any waterproof bag will do, but you would then have to set up a funnel system onto the filter to actually fill it up. This does have a pre-filter in it. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do because I know I've got heavily contaminated water and I want to keep the filter life going, right? As you can no doubt see, the water is pretty murky. So one of the things you want to do is you want to always keep clean water that you've treated. Don't use all your clean water because it's very useful for cleaning out contaminated surface. Now, given the conditions, that's good to go. So that'll be where I'll collect my water. Obviously, I'd be looking at a more bottle system, and I'd have the bottle set up, and that would be somebody's task would be to gather the water, pre-filter the water, pour the water out. One of the other things people don't do is they will hang bags like this or use the sawyer, but they won't clean the outside first before they connect anything. The reason for that is any garbagey water that may have virus in it, may have protozoa, it may have bacteria in it, will be on the outside. So again, you want to keep clean water and be generous with it to actually mechanically clean off, and especially at the base. And then you're going to wait. You're going to wait 20 minutes to half an hour for the external water, the clean water you've put on to actually go away. And if you have the time and the energy and the people available, I would do this again and then wait another half an hour. Uh, obviously if it's raining, uh, you would just hang it and let the rain do its job and then wait 20 minutes again, let anything on the outside be washed off. Remember, 
What's going to give you dysentery in grid down is a specific illness. What's going to give you stomach cramps, diarrhea, dehydrate you, really make you sick and possibly kill you in grid down is the invisible protozoa, the invisible bacteria, the invisible viruses that you're going to get from clean water. Prior to germ theory, which is just a theory like human caused climate change and gravity, germ theory, uh, people believed it was the smells that actually would make them sick. So if you use perfume, the water was good to go, right? So eventually they figured out by accident that it isn't. <laughs> it's actually what's in the water. And when they got microscopes, they were able to see them. And when you killed that type of bacteria, that type of uh, protozoa, it was a while before they could see viruses, uh, they realized that the water was then safe to drink, potable. He's able to drink it. So 20 minutes or so has gone by. I've done a second job cleaning on the outside. I'm now going to connect the system. So the filter on the base of it is a pre-filter system, so it's actually integral to the system on the base. And inside the bag you can replace uh, these. These seem to be just plastic filters. James! These seem to be plastic fi filters. So you can actually use clean water and probably reuse these for an awfully long time. So the system's uh, bottom pre-filter is just nylon uh, plastic disc as you can change out. And again, change them out, clean them very carefully. Uh, with clean water, get only mechanical debris off them and then let them be in the sun for a good six hours. You want to kill off any bacteria inside of these. And in grid down, these are not disposable. This is a system. This will connect to this. And it's a push system, which is good. And then you have this. The beauty of one of these is you don't have to back flush or use a syringe like you do with a soya. They have an integral bulb system that's part of it. Contaminated, non-contaminated. Very simple to look at. First time use. Let's have a look at the instructions. For once, the instructions are absolutely beautiful and I can absolutely understand them. Gather the water. Fill the rolled bag with water and hang in a high place, i.e. a tree branch. Bird feeder works great. Connect the hose to the roll bag and wait for the water to start flowing. Well, nothing much is flowing. Move it around a bit as well for the first time of use and the second time of use. Mm -hmm. You really want to get the air out of the tube. Now it says to open the tap for five seconds, so I would do that first, fiddle around with it. Let's go five seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, jump! Sorry about that. Squeeze it. And when you squeeze it, you actually want the backwash water to actually come out of the red tap. A couple of things wrong. The uh, levers have to be horizontal, so this one wasn't. So there is some filtered water that's not perfectly filtered because it's the first setup. It's come out of there, so I'll have to flush this as well. Um, so on the setup, this will be horizontal the whole way through, and this will be horizontal till connected, and then you open it to get the flush. Anyway, it's been long enough, so now let's uh, do the back flush. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm actually going to flush it again with some water from this one, because I waited too long. I think this is key to any mechanical system, is to take your time, be familiar with it, to repeat the cleaning stages as often as you feel comfortable doing. Don't just rush this. So this is why a 12 litre system is going to be better than a half pint system, which is effectively what the soya is, is that you're not going to be desperate to get water because you've purified 10 litres and you've got it stored up. So you can do it on a regular basis and have plenty of water. Now with the clean balls and the collecting systems, keep them 
well away from this until you finish doing it. And if you can actually wash your hands before you do all of the steps after you've set it up and then wash your hands again, preferably with an alcohol rub, before you actually start the collection process. Sterility is an absolute. What we're going to go for here is cleanliness. Sterility is very impossible to get in field conditions. But cleanliness can be, so think about each stage. What could have contaminated it? What hasn't contaminated it? Now, let's gather some fresh water for Kitty. So yeah, right off the bat, I'm going to get myself, uh, with this system, uh, it would be going into bottles of water. Now obviously, if you're camping and hiking on your own, you probably don't need 12 litres of water a day. But it's quite easy to gather three to five liters of water and fill up the kettle pot and all the rest of it in the morning and I would possibly even consider doing this into a bigger bag system and having it drain during the day when I was out and about or drain at night. Pretty good system. So, okay. so, Kitty says it smells okay. What does it taste like? Nothing. Taste of nothing? Taste of water. Good water or bad water? Good water? What good, do you think, Becky? Good stuff. So that took about three minutes. Um, so yeah, it's a long system. And I'm going to risk my health as well. Oh, you didn't tell me it was a risk. Good. It's good. It's good. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. So this is what Kitty's been drinking. Well, that looks very attractive, doesn't it? So yeah, pre-filter with micro towel and uh, Enjoy clear, good water. So the thing with this is, this is not reusable. This is not sustainable. At around 18,000 liters or less, it will fail. It will stop producing clean water for you. I think a lot of us preppers have systems, mostly soya because of price, um, that are in boxes that we are not familiar with. So this, while we have the remains of this summer, Crank open your system and use it. Use it in real conditions, in simulated SHTF conditions, and take your time. Know how to do it without contaminating the water that you're being produced, and you can do it without having to concentrate too harshly and grid down. If you miss a step, if you make a mistake, like I did when I left this open, you can end up getting dysentery, uh, beaver fever, whatever not a good idea. So I think for camping and hiking and uh, kayaking overnight trips, uh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, you have to do it, it's a bit fiddly and you have to spend probably a good 30 minutes from start to finish on getting the water and you probably have to spend another 15 minutes on clearing it up afterwards. But hanging it overnight on a camping trip will produce a ton of water. So I think what I would get is a collapsible large container to actually put the clean water in. That's what I would do, I think. I think that's going to be the best thing for this. I think you can't have too much water, and I think you can have not enough, and I think you can infect yourself easily with water. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, like I say, it's been very kind of windy today, so if parts of this are... So yeah, I'll overdub uh, the bits that I need to, so if you see my mouth moving, I'm not saying anything, that's why. Have a great day from an extremely humid Ontario in August. Peace to see.